sorry. Go, you go, look. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to be Sean McManus here, but I thought I would... Um, I just wanted to address the elephants in the room, namely uh, the past players that were up here earlier. Um, or the porky dockers, I think, as they were referred to. But we... Myself and Aaron and, and Pav, we're all from that era. We play with those guys, but clearly we've been making some harder choices um, <laughs> since that time. But we've left a few of our desserts on our table, lads, so get stuck in whenever you're ready. Just on that, Bruce, are you getting paid for tonight? By, by the word. Yes. I think you should be getting half your match payment to Shawnee because he just took over the whole night. He had the same idea. He thinks he should be getting that too. Um, guys, welcome. Uh, Luke, tell us, what was it like when, when you arrived at the club and, and you got to know this bloke and, and, and got to know his skills and what he could do? Yeah, I, I um, yeah, was pretty impressed, obviously, when I first started at the club with Matthew. Um, I think a lot of the, the qualities have been shared already. I don't need to go over old ground, but I think what a lot of people probably don't know or aren't aware of is um, his... Clearly a multi-talented person, talented in lots of different areas, but he has a really, really strong uh, passion for music. And I feel that Pav and I really linked up on this early days. Um, his favourite band, Pearl Jam, um, he loves to bust out a tune and sing to his heart's content. I'm sure Lauren has heard that before, um, but yeah, early days we actually, at a few club functions, got up together and sang a few songs. And I, I hadn't heard Pav sing before, and I'm sure everyone knows that um, I've got an amazing musical ability. <laughs> but Pav, and I thought, well, Pav's clearly very good at a lot of different things, and I'm sure music would come naturally to him as well, but it, it really doesn't. <laughs> and the times that we sang together, uh, the word the disgusting was probably the word that comes to mind. <laughs> I, um, I liken, and you're right, so firstly, no worries there, but I, I liken my singing ability to Paul Hazelby's dancing ability that <clears throat> I try really, really hard, but I've got no talent whatsoever. <laughs> if you see it later tonight on the dance floor, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I actually jumped up at uh, Pav's wedding in 2010 for, for a surprise song, no one knew it was coming, and... Um, I jumped up there with the band and, and got to work and obviously the vocal was pristine and, and then Pav, Pav jumped up next to me, uh, arm around my, my neck and started howling in my ear the, the lyrics to the song that we were singing and really tarnished the performance, I thought. <laughs> Aaron, uh, have you got a special Matthew Pavlich moment on the field? Is there something that stands out for you? Well, I do remember the day at... Um Telstra Dome at the time, I think it was, and I think he was in an open goal square and managed to trip over and whilst having a shot at goal and missed the ball. So it was a highlight because it didn't was happen very Richmond, often. wasn't it? Yeah. Richmond game, yet. Yeah. I think you, you kicked me the ball. You should have hit me on the chest, but it landed about 10 metres in front of me. I had to you go and been, chase it. And then I been tripped over my nose <laughs> and it went through for a point. Yeah, it was tremendous. Thanks. <laughs> but, hey, give us an insight. What's it like to be in, in the forward line with Pav? Yeah, well, played, um, played a lot of footy with Pav, obviously, and um, a few memorable games. Obviously, his 300th was a big game, and there was something extra memorable in that game was, um, I hope Lauren doesn't get jealous of me saying this, but I've hit Pav up in the forward line. He lined up and kicked the goal, and normally we go up and high-five and tap on the bum and celebrate the goal, and he goes, I effing love you. <laughs> and, <laughs> so there's a bit of, love, bit of love out in the field as well, so it was, I, a, uh, it was a bit of a special moment between me and the big Maverick. I, I said that because you got to understand, and this is uh, this is all about me. But <laughs> this this bloke alongside of me uh, broke his jaw against Port Adelaide the previous week, and um, had surgery, and then went out there the following week and um, played a dominant game, kicked three goals, um, and set me up with a couple. And um, he deserved more than the "I love you," uh, but. Uh, <laughs> That's what he got, so, no, Don't honestly, right still gets me excited at night when, you, when I hear about that. Matt, um, what, what does Pav give to the younger guys? Yeah, Pav uh, didn't know my name for the first three years. <laughs> um, he used to just tell me, yeah, chase him, tackle him. And, and then Ross came on board and uh, actually started to get him doing some uh, forward pressure, which was great. But, um, no, he gives the boys lots. I remember in the off-season, he's uh, come out with us one time uh, to a nightclub. And uh, 
He's going, he's going to a couple of us. Oh, boys, I've got this one. Got the cover charge. Oh, thank, thanks, Skip. Take up 80% 80, 80 of the salary cap anyway, so. <laughs> so. 90, 90. 90. <laughs> Five years up. So we've gone in, um, and then Pab's smoke bombed like he usually does, just got out of there early. We've gone to leave, and the bouncer's grabbed me, and he's gone, oh, where's that Matthew Pavlich? He told me he was going to the ATM to get me 200 bucks, and he never came back. <laughs> Tell him he's banned for life. <laughs> Where was that? What was that place? I can't remember. Were that a say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's the Red Sea. That's good. <laughs> the reason we won't he, the, be going there The tonight. reason he smoke bombed is we've gone in there and this is this is during a um, I think it might have been after a Mad Monday or something. And no, no, it was round eleven. <laughs> <laughs> 2011, so pre Ross. <laughs> good save. <laughs> but um. Pav, Pav rocked up and it got, I got all excited because Pav doesn't normally come out and have, a, have you know, shots and get on, the, get, on the, get on the gas with the boys. So I went and bought 20 shots. I'm thinking, here we go. I'm going to get stitch him up. All right, 10 each. And he goes, two. And he goes, I'm done. And walks off. I've got 18 shots left here. And I had to pay for them all as well. Serves you right. Look, do you guys end up uh, playing on each other as far as training time? Are you one-on-one -on -one a bit? And how does that go? Yeah, Cav and I have um, had one-on-one -on -one contests since back in the days of, yeah, 1920. So we've trained on each other a lot together and I can't recall winning too many one-on-ones against you, but uh, it's always been a privilege to play against one of the, the best uh, forwards in the game. But it, it does remind me um, of, uh, it was one of the first training sessions um, just leading into round one where Pav and I uh, were playing on each other in a bit of a practice match simulation and... It was the week before round one, so I guess the training intensity was starting to lift a bit. Everyone was a bit edgy about the upcoming start to the season, and Pav and I were playing on each other, and um, we were getting pretty physical there for a while, and I crashed into Pav a couple of times, and he went to ground, and, and it provoked Ross to yell out at me quite angrily not to touch his precious Pav. <laughs> and uh, interestingly enough, the, the very next contest, Pav's absolutely decked me and throwing me to the floor. And uh, I don't recall Ross being too concerned about my welfare. <laughs> you remember that, Pat? That's entirely inaccurate. It's the other way around. No, honestly, and the story's uh, not correct, but, <laughs> um, but to play against, to train against, you know, we, we try to train as we play. And this is um, being a little bit serious given the, the, the light of the night and, and where this is going. but. To play against uh, an All-Australian fullback and, and someone who I admire greatly, um, you know, drafted the same year as I am. The longevity in the game uh, for Luke and his ability to get up um, week after week for such a long time. He's had, you know, numerous injuries, albeit zero operations. Um, <laughs> it's, been, um, it's been tremendous. And, and the reason, a reason why I've been able to play um, at the level I have is, is competing against those guys at training. And that's... For the, the, the players in the room, that we, we train as we play, and, and that's why we've been able to be um, a, a much improved side over the past three or four seasons. Aaron, uh, as part of the leadership group in the club, tell us about Pav the, the leader. That's a one-man show. <laughs> that right, Wush? Yeah, that's correct, Aaron. <laughs> now, nah, look... Um... That's all I had. We were in trouble tonight after <laughs> the boys got up before and they spoke very well and uh, we're sitting at the table and um, I was only going to have one or two beers tonight. I thought I'd better slip a few more in to actually get a couple of words out of my mouth. So. And it's working beautifully. <laughs> I can take my seat. Um, hey, do you have a nickname other than Pat? Sorry? Nicknames? Nickname? Geez, where do we start? There's a few. Stoic is one that comes to mind. All the boys would like <laughs> the schnoz, the maverick, the pav. Um, yeah, but everything other than that, I probably shouldn't mention in public. In a public. <laughs> you're, you're, we're all friends here. You can feel free. Yeah, no, we'll keep it PG rated for tonight. Uh, Matt, what's what's one word when you think of Matthew Pavlich? What what word comes to mind? One word. Um, a few spring to mind. Uh, obviously, knowledgeable. Um, I remember we had a training session. We were out 
in Fremantle and um, Ross stopped the drill and he brought us all in and taught about the importance of being your own coach and he goes, I've read a book called The Talent Code and who's read that? And there's a bit of an awkward pause and then, oh, I've read it, Ross, I've read it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ross goes, yeah, tell, them, tell the boys what it's about. And he goes, is that the one with the... No, I think I read a different one, I read a different one. <laughs> Sorry, so he bluffed us there. But in all seriousness, um... <laughs> that's a true story. Ah, oh, jeez, wasn't that a mere Ross? Oh. Uh, the word that springs to mind the most is probably influential. Um, his ability to, to drag the group along to his standard and to, to really lift us is really quite profound. And um, his ability to over a long, long period of time is, yeah, has, has been phenomenal and it's been great for the growth of, of all the players underneath him and, and the football club in general. It, it. Uh, it has been an extraordinary career. Luke, can I, can I go back to you on, on the far end and just say a few words for us in, in tribute to Matthew and, and his career? Yeah, it's been an absolute privilege to play along. A player of, of his ilk, um, clearly the, the character and qualities that he has exhibited for a long time are very impressive. And I guess to have a front row seat and be a part of, of his career and his journey, you know, we've grown up together playing football, we've watched each other get married and have kids and, and all the while competing at this high level um, has been an absolute honour. And, um, you know, it's, it's certainly, in terms of his character and, and his qualities, a real testament to the parenting of... Um, Steve and Jan and, and his, um, of course his sister Jessica and just their family environment, you get a real sense of this. Some really strong family values there and that resonates very strongly with me. But yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure and hopefully there's a bit of football left in us. Aaron? Yeah, look, he's just a quality bloke. Um, you know, you enjoy spending time with him on and off the field. Um, enjoyable to sit down and have a beer with, but... Um, Number one, he's, he wants success in life as a person and um, he'll strive for that and he makes you grow being around him. Hi. Um, I'd just like to thank Pav for teaching, teaching myself and, and a lot of the other younger guys what it means to be an AFL player, you know, coming into a football club. You know, some of us, me personally, are quite confident in my abilities, but then I obviously realised how far off the mark I was when I watched a bloke like Pav, and not just Pav, Aaron and Wush as well, you know, how elite they are in their preparation and, and getting ready for an AFL game, but then going out and performing the way they do every week. Um, taught me a lot and still teach me to this day, and, and even, la even as, you know, last night, that still, still let me know when I've done, done things wrong and done things right, so thank you for teaching me and continue to teach me. But, yeah, just talking about words to describe Pav, obviously he's a, he's a champion, you know, he's also a mentor, he's a teammate, but importantly he's a, he's a friend as well, and that's been um, over my, you know, career to date, and it's been an absolute privilege to play with him. Fantastic, guys. Uh, I, I can tell you have a lot of fun together, but also there's that respect there for a, a great champion of the game. Guys, thank you very much for your time tonight. Would you please thank the boys for joining us?